Hey, we can't hear. I'm Yana. <laughs> Distract me. Today we shall be discussing. We are both ex students of RWTH Akhan, and our course was called Kame or Computer Aided Conception and Production in Mechanical Engineering. And today, let's discuss what the course was all about. The first thing that came to my head once I got to know that there are two branches, conception and production, was that I am taking conception, computer aided conception. I'll be doing a lot of CAD, a lot of design, solid works, CATIA, PROE, go full there. And there is a small part of the course which is related to that, but most of it really doesn't. It's much more FEM and CFD and mathematics, nonlinear, structural analysis, but nothing really focused to design that was my first impression of the course yeah definitely and um, for me i did my bachelor's in production engineering so that was the main focus and what interested me more was the production and uh, simulation in production so it had parts of this um, but mostly theoretical so uh, what really drew me into the course was the opportunity of doing an internship with the german company and actually be able to do maybe even work as a research assistant at the university which is where you will get your um, your applicable um, education or information uh, she did a lot more research than i did taking part in the course for me it was all about basically going there finishing my course the lectures and giving the exams and then thinking about life after i'm here <laughs> well my goal was to actually go to germany and get a job in germany and the easiest to do that is with uh, an education in germany because they exactly. value their yeah, education true. system and even just by doing a master's you don't need to do a bachelor's there you can very uh, relatively easily get a job there if your uh, branch is uh, hot popular <laughs> hot I studied conception. She studied production. <laughs> so conception was much more focused towards later doing simulation in your life. And understanding the theoretical background of simulation, which most other courses except Kame in other universities doesn't really go into. So we went into a lot of details with tensor algebra, with structural mechanics, with nonlinear. We also did continuum mechanics and then we also went into the background of computational fluid dynamics though we didn't really go into the practical of computational fluid dynamics oh we also had a fem practical course which was very 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 useful ultimately and the one of the biggest reasons for most of our batch mates to get internships and thesis definitely um i did production and all of those subjects that he just mentioned were also my core subjects so uh, not tensor not tensor okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but all the others basically all the the so the practical uh, introduction to simulation uh, cfd numerical methods so all these are my core subjects and i heard a lot of people like this when they were deciding whether they want to do conception or production and there was a big debate about that and how that would reflect for their uh, job search later on but according to me i I did my uh, internship at BMW in production and then I did my mini thesis uh, using MATLAB and then I used ANSYS and another um, hydraulic simulation tool for my master thesis. So basically I got to do both production and conception with which all of my subjects supported. So I don't really think that that is a, a really big decision. And also uh, what I'd like to say is that you can manip manipulate a bit with your um, electives. So as a production student, I could take two subjects electives from the conception branch, which I took. I took fracture dynamics, which is uh, very interesting and can be very useful for uh, those who want to do uh, simulations in fracture mechanics. The course also has four compulsory modules, mini thesis, master thesis, internship and German B1. Uh, for those who haven't had any uh, contact with German before starting this course, you will have a course at the university. So for the first month there, you will only be doing German. And then uh, when your studies start, you will go for, I think, once a week it was. And then before you give the exam, again, another uh, intensive round. And which this will prepare you for the uh, B1 level. By the way, it feels like a lot longer than 
the time period she <laughs> german is a beast that is not really easily handled yeah but i suggest you really really dive into that because you will need german no matter how much uh, yes. you hear about people getting jobs with english also you need german for everyday life and for just communicating with your colleagues because they won't talk english to you all the time they do talk english to you but obviously it's not their first language so i never had actually a problem with people not speaking english with me it was always that obviously they prefer they german they prefer german that is the point so in, yeah exactly german. so initially it was much more like i was speaking english and they were speaking english because they knew my german is not at all at the level that it needed to be okay my german but, was a bit better yeah, exactly. so they always so they talked so to they, me all the time exactly so, for, but I for me <laughs> i had to go slowly and once my german improved decent enough to for other people to understand me and me be able to communicate myself yeah. that is when i actually started talking to people in german the full time so right now at my job basically oh sorry internship let's go to internship uh so for internship um so <laughs> this course is designed to be a two year course which it you can't do it it's impossible uh just the search for the internship will take at the very least and for those who are extremely lucky a month to maybe six months um so or you might end up doing it at a institute if you can't really find it at a Yeah. company so yeah. that so, uh, we have uh, it's a big plus if you're already working as a research assistant or work student somewhere and you can get it easier but most of us didn't have that opportunity or you can ask your colleagues at jobs and they give you a recommendation or they get you to their contacts and that is how I got my first internship that yes but that is uh, not everyone watches every of my video <laughs> It's, it's the internship period that is scheduled compulsory is just 9 weeks and you basically won't be able to even find something that is only for 9 weeks and even if you find you don't really want to do that exactly. because exactly you would want to do and we absolutely recommend that you do the 6 months because uh a 6 months in your CV in a German company looks really good and then your master thesis if you do 6 8 months yeah. then you basically have one year of work experience during your studies Exactly. But at the same time, your master thesis is scheduled to be what four months, three months, so near four months. <laughs> four months, okay. So it's scheduled to be four months, and your internship is scheduled to be nine weeks. That's two, two and a half more months. So it's scheduled to be six and a half months. But ultimately, you will, regardless of what you want, if you want a good profile, you will end up taking a year at least if you find everything continuously and exactly at the right time, which basically I've never seen happen. Yeah. As Sunil just pointed out from the corner between the <laughs> two recordings there's a option to waive of the internship if you previously have experience not not, uh, not suggested not suggested by Sunil or by us so this is conditional i think it has to be like a year no but uh, of relatable work experience but for now it's compulsory for kame admissions to have one to year have, at yes. least one year experience so, yes. and relatable experience so ultimately you can all right now whoever is applying can waive it off waive the internship but, but not do not waive it off <laughs> uh and the fourth point that we wanted to talk about was the mini thesis which mini is thesis. supposed to be a sort of two month thing versus the four month master thesis which also rarely comes up to be that so you might have difficulties finding you might not have difficulties finding so that's a sort of half and half uh, thing actually i will say mini thesis already start searching right after your first semester at the beginning of the sem- second semester because sometimes it does take a little time to find it and sometimes the thesis itself can go on for very long we had a friend who was i did my mini thesis for like a year exactly yeah, and, and we had another friend who i mean i i, I finished it in that. one month to top to bottom i i went every day that is day. really rare i uh, yeah exactly but i think i, I i'm the only one i know yeah. who actually did it in just a month yeah uh so this entirely depends on the institute your mentor your subject uh what more things come up that you would need to include or your results are bad you have to redo and it's not your master thesis when you're doing it with a company you have this constricted amount of time uh, to do it in because they're paying you also because they're it. paying you and they have a more sort of focused um, yeah they want results they they want you yeah. for their yeah, good also yeah but this this is research for P- basically for phd so so for um uh, with a professor also, or yeah I did directly with the professor so uh, that's still rarer than doing with a PhD 
uh, because they, they are the ones with the topics. So best to approach someone who is actually doing a PhD, so someone younger, and uh, yeah, they'll understand. But you also need experience for that. I mean, everything that applies to internship, getting an internship, getting a HIV, getting a master thesis, you need uh, a part-time, uh, full-time job if you want to make your own company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next topic. I want to discuss that. Yeah. Application procedure. <laughs> we are not going to discuss the application procedure because you need to do something yourself. Seriously, it really, really ticks me off when I see questions like, okay, what is the CGPA I need or uh, do I need work experience? These are things that are clear, clearly written on the website. So when you, when you research your courses, so there are websites where you can search for a master's in Germany and uh, filter by language and from there if you search and then I suggest you just go to each of their individual websites and see the requirements because they're they maybe million. they're going to be all the same but exactly. maybe they're going to be different. I, I, if I say something right now and then you come back and ask me Vikram you said that the course requirement changes every year the courses change every year and I have not done a PhD on applications so basically just Google it out. Exactly. It's easy. You and seriously, if you don't uh, feel like doing any sort of work to get that information, you're probably not going to get it. <laughs> I would like that to be in loud. I will write that later in bold letters. <laughs> you are not going to get into a research-based course like Kame if you cannot figure out You're how to apply <laughs> to Kame. <laughs> so, Germany, once you finish your master's, you get... 18 months to search for a job and that is sometimes essential as yeah, we have so that's seen that's a this. year and a half uh, so some get it really soon but some take a while to get that <laughs> <laughs> to get a job and the 18 months really take off a lot of the stress in, in exactly so you're at least not worried about it and in these 18 months you can actually do whatever the hell you want to to earn your living so you can work as part time you can gain some small empo employment you can do one two more internships yeah if you want. some uh, some guys did uh, like preparation for some other uh, softwares that they can put on their cv uh, <laughs> like yeah. like hypermesh or abacus or something that uh, that you can uh, show because it doesn't really matter if you have a certificate in it as long as you actually know it and if you know the basics of simulation and of FEM, which uh, is going to be stated with your diploma. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know that, then you yeah. did not finish with yeah. the course. So, so then in any interview, if they ask you for any sort of software and you're able to give some sort of knowledge, then that's okay. So it, you could do that also in the meanwhile while applying for Practice, the job. Practice, basically get through the HR interviews, keep sending applications, figure out uh, how to learn yeah. German, better tools, better software, better profile, do yeah. something. Some some of the students, they stayed on with their university, uh, with the university as, um, as a Kiwi, as a research assistant. Uh, so where they did their master thesis, if you have a good uh, rapport with your professor, you can do that and sort of extend that work experience while you're searching for a job or you can even get a PhD so uh, some uh, people opt for that so even either at your university at your research institute or you apply to different uh, institutes uh, in the country